Hey folks, today I want to talk to you about a game that I got just before my quarantine lockdown. That is Tang Garden. It's fresh off the boat from Kickstarter and I want to tell you all about it right after this. Hey YouTube, this is Spec Tech and this is a terrific game. So Tang Garden is one of the many, many Kickstarters I backed. Uh, and the fact I think I backed this one, I, I'm trying to remember even when this came out. It was supposed to arrive in January of 2019. It was delayed and delayed and delayed. There were all kinds of issues kind of bringing this thing together. And while it's not unusual for a Kickstarter to be delayed, you know, several months, uh, once you kind of get over a year, you fall into this, this uh, realm of Kickstarters where people tend to get really nervous. Luckily for me and many, many thousands of others, this wait was definitely worth it. So Tang Garden is a tile laying game from Thundergriff Games. It plays four players. You can actually play it solo, play it two players, and play it three or four players. I've only played it uh, in the three player mode because my wife, my daughter, and myself are, are trapped here in the house. <laughs> and I haven't felt like trying the solo mode just yet, although while I got it out, I might as well, right? All right, so here is a typical three-player setup, and I'm just going to run you through real quick, kind of show you the components and show you a little bit more about the game. Uh, here's the player boards. Here's the lanterns, which have special powers. We'll talk about that in a second. Here are the cubes. These cubes will, will match. Like, this is earth, greenery, and water. As you match components on here, you get to move your cubes up. As you get to certain points, uh, you'll be able to unlock other characters or get extra points. It starts with these four small scenery tiles. You'll be able to get more scenery tiles. And uh, you always start with a, the ability to choose two. These are the larger ones. These are the smaller ones. You get these by uh, laying these tiles over here, over these top of these. These particular ones do the, the smaller scenery tiles and you've also got this kind which do the larger scenery tiles now you have to build you always start with this tile in the middle which um, has a combination of different things and it obviously goes it's got uh, pretty obvious where that goes right there and so each tile that you lay will have to kind of match up to the one you did before and when they connect like there's two blues here you'll be able to take your blue and move it up. If this had closed it out, like say that was already there, and I laid this blue down, which would not only connect to, but also close it so that there's no blue uh, to be connected anymore, you can move your thing up twice. So if I just laid that tile, I'll move it up for connecting one, and then another one for closing it. There are a lot of different interesting tiles, like I love this boat. <laughs> and if you look inside the boat there, there's like a special symbol. You'll see that symbol on a number of things, like uh, there's one right here. It's kind of hard to see, but you can, they're also inside of these pavilions. And you can see them on the inside of these bridges too. Uh, what those are, are places to lay your characters. So when you comes time to place your special character down, you can put them on top of those circles and it's important which direction they're facing because everything that they see along the little grid hex all the way to the to the uh, tiles out here on the side will maybe give you points depending on what characters want to see. Now up here you'll see a bunch of different uh, different types of chits and tokens. These are flowers and birds and fish that will lay on top of these things. Like if you got a decoration for fish, you could just lay them on these icons. You'll see little icons that point out where you can lay things. And the same is true for the greenery too. You'll see like little special icons uh, to lay things there. And you'll see uh, icons like this, which tell you where you can lay those pavilions, which are these little red topped buildings. There's these, I think the only icon that isn't on the beginner tile here is the uh, the bridge icons, which are pretty pretty obvious when you see them. Now, if you don't choose to lay a tile, you can choose to do a decoration. And we've already talked about these different decorations. Well, you get those from here, 
and you get to draw a number of cards depending on how many of these tiles are showing. Um, if all the tiles are up, you'll get at least two cards. And then you'll be able to pick from these cards. Uh, you'll pick the card that you want, and then you'll get to lay a decoration. All these decorations have an icon at the top, which point out uh, where it can go on the landscape. You'll see the matching icons in the landscape like I just showed you. But a lot of these also have a second icon here, here, which will allow you to move your track up when you place it. So it's possible to kind of move your track up with these as well. At the bottom of them, they have some iconography that can be difficult at first to understand. It's really, it's really not too bad. And, and it's all laid out in the rule book too for the very limited amount of things here that you'll need to know it for. But basically these are sets. And like for this flower here, there's two different types of flowers. And if you've got them both in a set, you get six points. And, uh, and like for the bird here, uh, the bird by itself is worth zero points, but if you get a bird and a fish, it's worth six points. And a lot of these decorations kind of work in sets, uh, collecting sets of things to get points at the end of the game. I think the tree components for this game are really, really neat. They've got sort of a, a black foam core, so they're pretty thick. Uh, it's kind of hard to get points with these because you've got to get a number of these to get points for it, but it's definitely... Um, it's definitely a good kind of creeper way to, to get some points for the end of the game. And they really look great. Uh, they're really great comp looking components, especially with a, a fully fleshed out board. As you get points in Tang Garden, you, it's recorded by how much money you have. So, uh, and there's all different denominations here. We got ones, fives, which are just knocked all over the place, <laughs> tens and twenties. So you don't have to have just a pile of uh, these cardboard coins laying next to you. They did have a metal coin set for this that was a little bit more than I wanted to spend. And uh, if you've got metal coins in the 5, 10, 20, and single denominations, you could swap those out pretty easily. But we haven't had a problem playing with the cardboard ones at, at all. It makes it a super easy way to kind of keep track of your points too. There's no pen or pencil required. Just uh, pile up your coins and count them out. You can even uh, change them in for these larger denominations to make it a little faster, a little easier at the end of the game. Now obviously I'm very excited and, and I, I really love this game. We've had a chance to play through it many many times. It's the kind of thing that is just very interesting and different every single time we play it. It's got a lot of really great components. I mean the components in this game are definitely like off the charts. It's got a fairly high retail value. I think it's about $65 on Amazon. You can buy Pretty much what you see here. If you did back the Kickstarter, it came with a couple of expansions. Uh, this one, I think, I don't know if this one will ever go retail or not. Uh, this one or the other one. Uh, there's probably a good chance it will, though. I think, I personally think that this game's going to be very, very popular. They introduce stuff like uh, extra characters. Uh, they have a scenario dice where you can roll a die and get kind of a random scenario, which involves like different amounts of dice and stuff. We haven't even felt compelled to try any of this stuff yet because this has been just so interesting. Now this game isn't marketed as a gateway game and uh, in a lot of ways it's not a gateway game and by that I mean uh, people that are very new to board gaming being interested in it. But I kind of think that's a mistake. I think it absolutely could be. Uh, Wingspan is often marketed as a gateway game and it is absolutely not a gateway game. <laughs> it is, it's got a lot of really interesting and sort of difficult things, but it's really not that hard to teach. It's actually very streamlined, it's really tight. You can tell that they spent a lot of extra time putting this together in a way that for me is very easy to understand. In my opinion, if Carcassonne is a, is a gateway game and I very much feel like it could be, then this could be too, maybe just a little bit level up. But if you play Carcassonne with someone, you can definitely play this. What brings this up and what makes it different from like Carcassonne or a lot of other tile laying games are these 3D components that really change uh, change the dynamics of the game and make the really kind of make this garden that we're building come to life. Probably the most complicated aspect of this game is going to be how the points are generated. So the basic gist of this game is we're building this this beautiful garden, uh, one tile or decoration at a time. We're also installing things, uh, and this is so different from Carcassonne or any of the other ones, are these uh, landscape tiles that kind of go, they slot into the sides here. 
And these have interesting panoramic views that are uh, basically represent things that your characters will see when you put them in the garden. See, the point is not to only build the garden, but we're going to invite all these nobles here to enjoy the garden that we've created. And we'll be uh, playing with them as characters as we build the garden, but we'll also be placing them into the garden in specific areas and looking specific directions. And everything they see in that direction that we've added in the form of a decoration or uh, these panoramic views could potentially give them points. So just like real people, there are different things that they want to see. Those different things can get you more points or less points. And they can give you special abilities that you can use throughout the game to accomplish different things. Probably the trickiest thing with this game is actually packing it up and putting it back in the box. Uh, it came with a really good insert and it can store vertically, which is which is great. When you open up the box, everything isn't all over the place. It, it's, it's actually really smartly done. But it is a little tricky to get all this stuff back in the box, especially if you swap out some of your Kickstarter exclusives. <laughs> Thankfully, there have been a couple of videos online that uh, show very carefully how to pack all this stuff back in there. And it's really, after you've done it once or twice, it's, it's not too bad. Another kind of negative, but not really, is the iconography it can be a little bit difficult at first. Uh, it, that'll probably only bug you maybe your first game. You'll start to notice the things that are the same. And although, um, although at first it seems like there's a lot of different things to know in here, it really boils down to uh, just a very few, maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 different icons. Most of them are on these things, which don't come up a whole lot. Uh, or you can take a really close look at before you put on there. A lot of them are really obvious, like the little dragon, picture of the dragon and the dragon on here, or a waterfall, or, or temples, or things like that. After you've played your first initial game, where you're kind of learning everything anyway, it won't matter. You'll have it down. The instruction book for this was pretty good. Uh, I like it. It didn't have a player guide. I, I really like a good player guide, so I went on BGG. And I do recommend, there's a couple of different options on there. I do recommend uh, you go print off. There's one here, there's one here that someone made that's got, uh, that's got everything, even the expansions in it, and a nice little tight player guide. And there's another one that just kind of goes over the turns and the, the different things that you can do in your turn. Both of these are really good and will be very handy on your first game. Now, the back of this uh, rule book has all the special rules, and these are the mainly the things that you're gonna have to try to figure out. As far as figuring out the iconography and stuff, uh, most of what you're gonna see is gonna be at the bottom of these different cards for the different people that you're gonna invite into your garden or use as your players. All that's laid out very well uh, in plain English here on the back of the, uh, of the instruction book for Tang Garden. And my first couple of games, I just kind of played with this sitting out in a corner somewhere for easy reference. And of course, at least one of these printouts I got from BGG has all of them listed, even the ones from uh, the expansions. I really feel like compared to other games that are just purely cardboard, you really get a lot for your money with Tang Garden. I, I definitely, I would put it up there in complexity with Wingspan. It's a different animal. It's a completely different game than Wingspan, but definitely no harder than it is. In fact, I think it's probably, probably quite a bit easier. And that's what's cool too, is it's it's easy to pick up. It's got a really succinct rule set, but it's got enough variation for complexity that uh, as you get better and better at this game, you're going to see other kind of pathways to victory. Another core concept of this game are these lanterns you'll see at the bottom of your player board. Uh, these kind of give you four special abilities. One is to move one of your characters that you've already placed somewhere else in the board late in the game that can be a very, very powerful and or devastating move as you put your character someplace where someone else was hoping to stick their character. There's another option in here to dig through this deck and pick out specifically the character you want. I recommend using that early on. There's another one on here to pick two tiles. Uh, this one's a great one if you want to advance some of your cubes up. You have to get your cubes up uh, to a certain level to get different people to get more and more characters out there. Uh, there's another one on here where you can place two decorations at the same time. And that's very handy because with the decorations, especially a lot of them are, are done in sets. So if you happen to get two pairs of a set, like for instance the fish and the, uh, and the birds, you only get points if you've got both of them, if you've got fish and birds. So if you've got it both in one hand, it can be really handy to flip that lantern over 
and place them both at the same time. That way you won't spend each turn digging and digging through there to try and get that specific decoration. It's super handy with the trees too because the points for the trees increase uh, depending on how many different types of trees you have. There's a lot of different paths for victory, a lot of different kinds of points. All of them end up with a really beautiful uh, game on your table. One that even if you lose, you're you're still it's still fun to put together. It's kind of like a puzzle that you collaboratively put together with competitive points mixed in for fun. The table presence for Tang Garden cannot be understated. It is definitely one of the most beautiful games that I've ever seen. They really did a terrific job. These miniatures that came with it are really interesting too. They're a little bit too low a resolution to paint in my opinion. Now, I've seen people painting them online. I don't really have the desire to do that. I feel like um, these would probably benefit with a nice wash. Like you could take a prime them and then hit them with a good wash and maybe give them a little bit more detail, make them a little bit more interesting than the gray pieces that we see now. But I haven't felt particularly tempted to paint them just because the, the resolution's a little low and I, I hate trying to paint in details uh, when they could be kind of obscured. In fact, a lot of times they end up looking worse than if you just left them alone. They do have colored bases on the bottom, which really helps uh, helps you match up their character cards. Because for some of them, it's not obvious. A lot of them are made to sort of match the picture here. But even so, you know, except for maybe a couple of them with like really distinctive things like, like the hermit here with this big staff or the lady there with her umbrella, it can be kind of hard to kind of eyeball from across the table and see which one is which. But it's really fun to take them and put them on a boat or on one of these bridges or, or inside of a pagoda kind of looking out. And then the pagoda's got little windows on the side and you can look down and see them in there kind of looking in the direction that you put them in. This is a really fun and delightful game. And although it is like over $60, I really feel like you get your money's worth out of this. This is definitely the kind of thing you could take uh, take over to a family house over Thanksgiving or some other holiday or or while you're locked up inside with the with your kids. I think it's something that would be really interesting too uh, for a wide range of age groups uh, from older folks to younger folks. I think that this is a I think this is a good great overall game. And folks that's all I got for you right now. Tang Garden. Really fun interesting game. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. I honestly do. It's, uh, it's got to be my top 10, all my definitely in my top 10 games of all time right now. I'm so enamored with this game. It came at a really great time, kind of. I mean, it's not a great time for anyone, but uh, my wife and daughter are here trapped with me. And getting them to come to the table and play this game has not been very difficult because it's just that neat. That's all I got for you today. Until we meet again, have fun playing games, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah, and then there's these kind of yin-yang tiles that are... Then there's these yin-yang tiles... This is a terrific game. Alright, see you later! <laughs>